Welcome back to another Tokyo Model Detective show guys I have got a book review for you guys that might help you and guide you in terms of airbrushing and maintenance uh, We have a, a new book that's been released in Japan This book came out maybe a few weeks ago and, and I've got to say it's one of the best books I've got for uh, airbrush maintenance It's probably um, one of the books to have if you are an Iwata fan if you use our water brushes um, this book um, or this review uh, might persuade you to uh, purchase this book I will be having these books on my website for sale so please um, send me a PM via YouTube or my uh, you can check out my store um, and yeah it's a great book and I'll be doing an in-depth review and we've also got another book which was handed down to me by my kind father when I was at uh, university studying illustration um, this book is the the complete guide to airbrushing techniques and materials by um, Michael English um, very good book a bit old but I'm gonna show you guys the content of this book you probably I'm not quite sure if you can get this book but I know I used this book through my university days when I was illustrating and uh, without further ado let's uh, crack on and get into it guys okay guys welcome back um, big shout out going out to the crew that are watching me live on YouTube uh, we've got three viewers on at the moment um, and I'm going to be doing a book review or two book reviews and the first one is the Iwata by Anes Iwata airbrush maintenance book um, this book has just come out it came out maybe uh, a few weeks ago I believe um, and it's really really good um, especially if you have an Iwata airbrush um, I have maybe I think three or four eyewater brushes custom micron the Eclipse the HP plus I honestly cannot recommend these airbrushes um, because I have never ever had to change the needles I've never had any big problems going on with my airbrush if I have had problems I've rectified them as best as possible um, and I thought when I saw that this book could come out that I would um, purchase it and look and see how to fix airbrushes by myself because I've heard many stories of people sending airbrushes off to these companies and they take so long to, uh, to get fixed maybe two to a month, uh, two weeks to a month <coughs> um, I will be selling these books on my store like I mentioned um, this is the front cover um, you get a, an actual flesh tutorial here if you can see that on camera as part of the book for some reason in Japan they like putting these um, little sleeves on which are really annoying I'll take that off that's the front cover um, it's it's not a thick book and it's not really thin and it's enough information for you guys to um, you know learn how to fix an airbrush properly use the correct tooling as well uh, and on the little um, front cover it says custom micron head system the nozzle base which is different from the conventional type of heads has free holes for air passage very true taking into consideration the flow of compressed air so it does give you some examples in English which is kind of weird because the book is actually in Japanese but um, so it does give you some examples there that's the back of the book and um, this book was priced at 3,000 yen plus tax I think I can get these cheaper so 
Um, I'll find out today when I hit the suppliers, but I will be putting this on my store page. Um, let's have a look at the inside of the book. Now, this series, there is um, some other books that you can get, um, which look really cool. And I think one, that one especially, is called Modeler's, Modeler's Room Style Book. And I think that is specifically about man cave setups. Awesome. As you all know, I've got my new man cave and it's man the best thing in the world. Um, front cover sleeve. It's got a picture of the HBTH and the Awa CMC Micron, I believe. Table of contents. They are around about 75 pages and in the first page, this is something that I would love to do actually. I would love to visit the factory. I did meet one of the reps at the All Japan Hobby Show and I must say um, the rep was really kind. I told him that I, I love your brand and everything else and he was really like stuck that I said that to him by the way. So a big shout out going to Anest uh, Iwata. Um, so basically in the front cover it shows you um, some pictures of the factory um, and it's got like a bit of a museum kind of thing going on from the history kind of nice um, the first page on airbrushing shows you um, the HPCP and the HPSAR just showing you guys how airbrushes work the components um, like I said there's, there's not that much um, to an airbrush really um, internally but obviously all airbrushes are made differently so um, you can get trigger types you know single action types which are the Procons which is this this isn't um, an Iwata Procon this is a Krios one but that's single action that's double action um, double action is because let me put that down um, because you have control of the airflow you can control it through using the trigger which is um, obviously controlling the air that's being passed through to the nozzle uh, single airbrush just basically um, you can control flow by adjusting the the needle at the back or depending on what type of airbrush you're using um, it could be different but basically just up and down up and down I started airbrushing guys using a Pashish airbrush which was a single action you can still build model kits with single action airbrushes in fact I think single action airbrushes are probably better for beginners um, if you want to start out airbrushing um, getting a single action airbrush there is no issue with that and I think it's a good way for you to practice with a single action airbrush first rather opposed to using um, a double action double action airbrushes depending on what brand can be a bit difficult to use especially if you are a beginner um, so like I said, it just gives you some ins and outs on, on how different types of airbrushes work. The only airbrush type that I don't have is a trigger style airbrush, which I am considering um, getting um, one in the future. Now, this talks about um, gravity thread airbrushes, where they use um, a bottom cup. Uh, talks to you about that, very simple. This section here talks to you about the airflow valves that you get on some airbrushes. How the airbrush works in terms of spray and how the nozzle works and everything else. And then it goes on to compressors and piston types and gas types and all the rest of it. Like I said, I don't want to bore you guys with this. Um, but there's something that I haven't talked about, which I will do um on my on my channel 
is I'm going to be doing uh, my bench series. First of my bench series will be about airbrushes and compressors. Um, I um, was lucky enough to purchase um, an Iwata Powerjet compressor, which I've been after one for ages, and uh, they're very expensive. And I managed to get one uh, for five thousand yen. Um, some guy off Yahoo Auctions had uh, used it for other things, put it that way. And it was he changed the valves, the adjustments. The air trap was clogged with this weird white substance, which I don't know what it is. So I bought it really cheap. And I fixed it. I've replaced the uh, moisture trap. I replaced the couplings. Um, I replaced some piping as well, and it works perfectly. So, like I said, I'll be mentioning that in a, another video. Um, as you guys know, I am doing this show live, and I am going to answer questions. And I've got a question from Sean Sully. Um, he's put, "I agree with Iwata being the best." My first airbrush was a cheaper Master Airbrush G44. Absolute nightmare. Bought new needles for it thinking that was a problem, but no, they're just shit. <laughs> I now have an Iwata Revolution. Good old purpose. Never had a problem with it yet. Um, that's something I'm gonna talk about maybe in my series show, but I might mention it now. <clears throat> um, there's a lot of newbie airbrushes out there that basically um, they want to save money I get it we don't all have the incomes you know you know I'm not a freaking millionaire I'm not you know I'm poor I get people's budgets I really do right but there's a big but with airbrushing, I think, and this is my own opinion. If you are gonna start out airbrushing, I thoroughly advise you to save the money and get a really good setup. Um, I can't stress that enough because what will happen is if you get a really cheap knockoff compressor um, with airbrush off Amazon, eBay, you know, one of these Chinese little things, they're just gonna blow up. Um, I've heard stories of people's compressors dropping out, the airbrushes, the needles don't last two seconds. I reckon you've got six months with heavy use. From what I can see, the airbrushes have got like really bad triggers. And they're just nasty little things. <laughs> <clears throat> I mean, they're all right if you're just gonna play around with an airbrush, like. But if you want to to have like um, quality builds, quality paint jobs, something that's gonna last you for a long time down the road, I thoroughly suggest you spending some money, getting a decent setup. Now, obviously, I got a power jet. Yes, it is kind of top tier range compressors. Um, I want to do a very good range called the uh, Sprint Jet range. You know, and you get a free airbrush with it. And I, for, I forgot which one it is that you get, but um, quality made. I've still got mine. I brought mine from the UK. It still works. It's in my house right now. Um, quality product. And that thing runs like a dream no issues with it like I said I've had it for nearly I bought it in 2004 still works still works guys um, I want to do excellent customer service my my custom micron airbrush 10 years warranty that's on all parts everything obviously if you drop the frigging needle that's your fault, right? <clears throat> so you're not going to get covered by that. But any other parts on it, the pistons, 
the air valves so wrong just send it to iwa they should fix it as long as you have your guarantee card that you got with the air Bre quality company quality service say no more and you're gonna spend an extra bit of money for that service and have a quality product that will never never let you down so i'm appealing to people that are airbrushing start buying these cheap shit knockoff airbrushes and compressors off amazon or ebay because you're gonna end up crying down the road six months later on it when it all breaks then you have to buy another one which probably equivalates to the same cost as you buying you know uh an iwater you can buy used ones i bought this compressor used and it works perfectly so <clears throat> anyway going back to the book review i've uh, divulged i've gone on a tangent um but thanks for your question there sean sully um again this goes through um the airbrushes this goes through the compressors um i presume it tells you what compressors work with which airbrushes on this page as it says here compressor times airbrush so it'll tell you which compressors you should use with i want airbrushes uh very good guide <clears throat> first step here it's got a little tutorial um, how to mix um, paint a lot of people um, <laughs> a lot of beginners and this is I had the same problem when I started out um, is basically mixing paint is probably the most fundamental thing of airbrushing and it doesn't matter if you're using lacquer, acrylics, inks, um, top coat, um, varnish, anything. It's all about paint mixing and getting paint to a consistency that will go through your airbrush. And I can't stress that enough because what's up Bob um, basically a lot of problems stem from a, a beginner using an airbrush <clears throat> they get spats they get blockages um, it could be too thin all the rest of it um, basically for lack of paints one to three um, one to two ratio of thinner to paint acrylics um, depending on what company you've got companies like Vallejo, MIG um, and many of these other companies now that just do their paint straight out of the um, bottle which is great uh, for beginners you don't have to mess around with with thinners if you're using lacquers <coughs> um, you got um, you have to use thinner um, acrylics acreosin that Mr. Hobby do again let me get some of this uh, you got that stuff there, a creosin that has a thinner with it as well. Um, MIG, MIG stuff is already pre um, pre mixed, but you can add thinners to it. So this book here, um, they're using Guyana's paint. It tells you how to mix paint, and you should always mix paint very well, because um, if you don't mix paint very well, you're gonna have a really bad effect on your on your model kit or whatever you're doing um, so this explains about paint ratio mixing um, also as well what's really good for my water I think you can download uh, the test testing paper that you want to do when you start off airbrushing um, do your dots do your daggers do your joining ups and everything else practice sometimes beginners that start out with airbrushing they tend to get the airbrush put paint in and think that they're going to be some master airbrusher it doesn't work like that um i'm lucky enough that i'm an illustrator i've been using airbrushing since i was maybe in my 20s i just practice with just using newspaper like scrap paper and just just 
just practicing doing doodles and curls, inverted curls, bows, reverse bows. Good way to start out. I thoroughly do not suggest you guys, if you're new to airbrushing, getting an airbrush and just thinking that you can just do it offhand. Um, I, it's like buying a new car, right? Cars work differently. Each car works differently. An airbrush is the same. Each company airbrush, different companies, work very differently. Um, I want us a different to badges. Badges are different to Pashises. Pashises are different to Hyder and Steinbach. You need to get used to the brush. I have problems because I have different brushes. So I need to learn on, on how to use each one because they are all different. Um, but like I said, without plugging Iwata, I just do use um, Iwata airbrushes mainly. Um, so I'm used to how they work. So anyway, again, this book goes into the um, lessons. You don't have to download one of these. I mean, you could just get some um, paper, draw some squares and practice your gradients and stuff like that. Practice your curls, just scrap paper guys, that's all you need. And this here shows you um, the effects of the lesson. Um, so you know that one, your paints mix properly. Two, um, you're not gonna have any issues um, down the line with it. And you know, and it's just a practice thing as well. So you want your paint mixed properly. Um, so these are some products down here to show you guys how to clean an airbrush and this is another topic that i want to get into wait a minute guys get this out um a lot of newbies i said i don't want to talk about this too much because i'm going to talk about this in my in my next video but um <laughs> and robin robin's on like robin's robin's one of these people that, uh, that does this to his airbrushes <laughs> cleaning your airbrush and like I said I've had I've had this um, for seven eight years never a problem my dad who sadly passed away four or five years ago gave me some his aerograph airbrush which I don't use he's had that since 1960 I think still works maintenance I can't stress that enough. Um, people complain about airbrush. Oh, it takes too long to clean. Or oh, can't be. But it doesn't take too long. It takes the same amount of time making a cup of coffee. You know, it doesn't take that long. Um, it seriously doesn't. So this Iwa book tells you how to do uh, the procedures in cleaning an airbrush. Um, I can't stress this out enough. Again, it does tell you how to do it. Um, very easy, you know, you need a few products, um, airbrush cleaning fluid, some um, dental brushes, a brush, ki uh, kitchen towel paper, um, and uh, a disposer. But like I said, again, I'll be selling these on my website. These are the Tamiya uh, airbrush cleaning kit. Um, it comes with two brushes, um, and it comes with grease and nozzle sealant. Um, this product here is very, very good. Um, it comes with a wrench as well. Um, but like I said, um, this is for more like the intermediate user. Um, I will be talking about that later on um, in my video. But like I said, clean your airbrush. This tells you how to do it. Very simple. Cleaning your needle. You know how to do it safely stuff like that um, tools on how to remove certain parts you're gonna need a wrench um, a wrench or pliers with plastic that's internally inbuilt into it so you don't scratch or damage the, the threads um, prepare tweezers everything else so 
Anyway, going on to the airbrushes. <clears throat> this book is starts off with the HBTH, which is the Trigger Action Airbrush. It tells you uh, step by step on how to uh, disassemble, take out the needle, take out the end nozzle, take out the internals, springs, and everything else very safely. So, very good guide. Um, taking out the inner parts with the o-rings and the piston valve how to clean it gives you step-by-step -step breakdowns um, it's it's very in-depth guys it is it's very easy as well step-by-step -step instructions um, nothing too difficult anybody can do this if you have the right equipment um, so that's just a basic guide on that one now I want to do do and I'm gonna get one of these <coughs> is the I want maintenance set it comes with um, pliers screwdriver um, end nozzle removal and all the rest of it all the goodies if you want to buy one of those sets, by all means do. Um, but, you know, I've got other equipment to match this, so I don't really need it, but I am a bit of an uh, I want a fanboy, you know, so. And this is the Revolution HBTR airbrush. Again, trigger type action. Um, it's got my airbrush in there, the HB Plus CP very handy to do um, with these airbrushes um, what will happen is and this is what I found out not recently but <clears throat> what will happen is and if you guys are watching me live um, is that you'll get paint build up maybe or paint leakage that gets into that um, that valve there there's a piston inside here and what can happen is is that it will get um, clogged up and stiff and that can affect the air so all you need to do is, is take that unit off and inside here is an internal o-ring take all that out strip it down clean it uh, put a bit of grease on the um, on the o-ring put everything back and it'll just it'll be like brand new that's something that a lot of beginner airbrushes uh, airbrushes you know, all my airbrush is broken. They in instantly think that, you know, it's broken. It's not broken. It's just something is clogged somewhere. Something needs to be, something needs to be cleaned. Um, so, like I said, in this section here, um, talking about triggers and stuff like that, these sections here need to be greased. I grease mine. In here, all the internals, the needle, the springs, everything, and everything smooth as butter, man. I'm Sean from. I don't know where you're from, Sean, but got a comment in there. <clears throat> what primer do you use? Do you thin it? I use um, Mr. Hobby primer, uh, different primers, but I also use canned primer. Um, I don't know. I just prefer using canned stuff. I've never had a problem with it. Um, the I just use normal Mr. Color Thinner for my primer. That's it. But Mr. Hobby do do like um, thin line series um, thinners. So. Acrylics. I don't really use acrylic paints, but um, this company here, um, UMPRetail.com. Ultimate modeling products, check them out. They do what's called Stylo Res, and I've heard a lot of people um, say good things about that stuff. And I don't think you have to mix it either, it just comes straight out of a bottle. <coughs> um, Intergalactic, Intergalactic Pies Pot, um, aka Robin. Yeah, it's fast to do if you don't let them build up. Like I said, um, I've always cleaned my airbrushes after usage it's it's just something that's basically 
I've trained myself to do. Um, because what will happen is when you get back on the bench and you, you fire up, you airbrush, what do you have to do? Spend 30 minutes cleaning the airbrush. And that already, you know, puts me in a bad mood, you know. It's like a mechanic. If you don't clean your tools in your box and you go to work the next day, you have to sort out all your wrenches, spanners, and you know, it, it drains you. So it's better to do stuff after you finished with it <clears throat> again how to remove um the end nozzle be careful with end nozzles they are very delicate um luckily i've never had any problems with mine um sean's out in the us of a hey, thanks sean sean was just telling me um he's put spot on it was a matter of money hence the master airbrush you're right save your money and buy a quality airbrush um, Bob's put clean it every time agreed yeah I can't stress that enough guys uh, going back to the book there is a bit of a, an interview with one of the um, guys that obviously use I want to brush is Mr. Hijime Soriyama probably doing a quick interview there next now this is what I have <laughs> I was lucky to get one of these I do have the custom micron it's a beautiful airbrush to the point where I don't, I don't use it. Um, it's so nice. <coughs> Let me get it out. <laughs> so this is the custom Micron. Um, I have the um, CM hyphen B one version and it is the creme de la creme of airbrushes um, as an illustrator and a modeler <coughs> this brush is like suits my needs put it that way it just fits how I airbrush um, so that's the Iwata Micron there and guys if you're watching me live it comes in a beautiful red metal box um, it is so nice and inside the box um, again it's all metal you get your factory tested um, test sheet instructions on how to um, use it and there it is it's it's a beautiful thing it comes with lube as well it's, it's a beautiful airbrush man um, I've heard a lot of good comments about it it's really lightweight as well it's a bit different from this version that's in the book but yeah it's a very very nice airbrush I think these go for about $400 I got this at stock my suppliers um, but yeah so like I said if you're an experienced airbrusher then get something like this if you're a beginner I, I wouldn't suggest getting some at this fancy but <clears throat> when you get into higher end higher end um, airbrushing it's important to know the functionality and how to fix things like you know buying this book for example tells you everything on how to fix it properly don't be getting your granddad's rusty pliers out and messing shit up man you, you gotta be really careful with these and if you can't fix it send it back to i well, i don't think you know that you, you're gonna try and cut corners duh gonna cost you more money down the line um what's up john paul in the building um what size needle for the micron i believe it's a 0.2 isn't it Let me check the specs yeah oh sorry it's a 0.18 so it's just short of 0.2 it's a very very fine fine needle on there <coughs> to the point where you don't need to take the end nozzle off to get your very fine lines that does that already and on this test sheet I've seen the tester at the factory do it it's insanely thin um, so yeah this is the custom micron it's one of the Iwata's 
top range, top level brushes. And again, this is the, the maintenance that you have to do to the, uh, the airbrush. When you look at this book, um, these type of maintenance, sorry guys, I know you can't see this video. Um, but like I said, I will be uploading this video up to YouTube so you can watch the close-ups and everything else. Um, these type of intense cleaning breakdowns here, um, this is something that you would do every three months, six months, once or twice a year. Um, don't be doing this shit <laughs> every time you finish painting Jesus Christ no these are like something you do quarterly through the year <clears throat> I do this to my brushes quarterly um, especially um, if you guys are watching me um, so end nozzle sealant I might do every two months it depends on how much you use your airbrush but end nozzle um i put some sealant on every two months grease maybe again every two two months general cleaning quick like five minute cleaning you know i do that after every every time i use my airbrush so this book just is for basics on like doing deep cleans really deep cleans um so this book does get, go into a, a lot of depth yeah, about how to do this. And like I said, you're going to spend money on a custom micron airbrush, top line, top tier airbrush. You need to learn how to clean it. Send it to high water, it's going to cost you money, you know. Um, moving on to the um, Gravity Fred Revolution. This is something very interesting, what I learned as well. The... I don't know how to I don't know how to say this actually the that section guys there that brass screw or oh, I don't know what the name is I need to find out what that is if you can see it on camera all you need to do is use a pair of tweezers to get that out it took me years to figure that out till I got this book I was like god damn that's how you do it that's why I cleaned all my um, all my pistons in there. I had to clean them all. All my the brushes that I use mainly. <coughs> um, so yeah, uh, very easy to do. Just be careful. There, it's a little bit difficult putting the, that section back in actually. Um, I want to do do a special form airbrush maintenance tray which is very expensive i i want one but i know that i just can't be asked getting one because they're a bit pricey lance um from australia he advised me to get one and lance as well as told me to do a book review for him this, this video is for lance basically um so some of these airbrushes have what's called a floating pin, a floating nozzle, and I think this I this Eclipse has one. Not all airbrushes have the same. Let me take that out carefully, guys. That section there, that brass bit there, actually comes out. Um, what's that again? Be very gentle. Be very gentle with airbrushes as well. Don't be like rough with them. They're very very delicate things. Um, so putting needles back anyway go through that guide um, another interview with uh, Tatsuya Nakamura going into the Eclipse one of my favourite airbrushes very good I recommend this airbrush yeah you know it 9 on, on it <laughs> um, I don't sell needles on my website if you contact the distributor in America. There is an iWater distributor company in America. They can re give you replacement parts and stuff. I can sell you airbrushes, but not replacement parts, sadly. 
Uh, anyway, again, the, this book gets very generic. It, you know, once you learn how to clean an airbrush, <clears throat> this is with eye waters. Um, it becomes the same. Um, they're not all the same, but you know, it's the same theory. Um, Again, got another interview with this guy called uh, Shin uh, Tanabe. Um, now we're moving into the trigger type gravity thread um, airbrushes. These are used for like cars, <laughs> trains, anything that's insanely big. And it's got a huge cup on there as well. So that's when you need like a big a big compressor to, to pump out sort of the air for that. It's called the uh, Eclipse HPG5. That's big. And in the last part of this book, it does give you a tutorial guide on uh, on how to do a bust figure, how to do flesh tones. <coughs> which I really like um, it's got some glazing powder there as well awesome that's what I've actually started to do that guys I've started to airbrush base coats on my figurines and I, I really enjoy it because it's really it's quick and easy to do it's like putting seven eight layers of frigging hand wash flesh tones oh, fuck that just get it off with an airbrush Um, so yeah, nice little guide. At the back of this book has an Iwa catalog. Obviously, if you guys want to see this, please watch the video that's going to be uploaded from my GoPro camera. Um, talks it gives you the guide for all of their products on airbrushes <coughs> and compressors. And flight cases, which I didn't know they had till now. Um, it's got hoses, quick release, pressure gauges, holders, uh, manifolds, got everything in here. So, that's the book, guys. Um, the Iwata Airbrush book. Very good book. Again, I'll be putting this for sale <coughs> on my... Um, TMD Tokyo Molly Detective Store. I'm gonna find out the price of it today. Let me know if you guys are interested. Um, there's not many left, I don't think, at the store. I think there's about four or five books. Um, the last segment of this video. So you've bought a maintenance book, right? You know how to do all that stuff. You starting out airbrushing, great. Um, another good thing is. Um, just buying a book on airbrushing, you know, this, this book here is called The Complete Guide to Airbrushing Techniques and Material, a book by Michael, Michael English. My dad gave me this book when I was young, I think it was about when I, when I went to university, I started to get into airbrushing. All my students in my class didn't airbrush, it was only me. And I did some really cool shit at university, man. And everyone was like, wow, that's cool. How did you do that? I'm like, airbrushing. Nobody in my university airbrushed. It was very odd. They're all into, like, Photoshop. And I'm like, wow, that, that sucks, man. Do, do it like the real shit. Anyway, um, Michael English, I, I believe, um, is from America. He wrote his book. I take it that he is... Uh, an airbrush artist and it talks about his work and stuff like that um, really cool stuff <coughs> talking about the history of airbrushing as well it's kind of interesting <coughs> so nice little guide there talking about how to apply stuff this, this, this work is amazing I wish I could show you this um, airbrushing on World War Two planes, like I said, I'm just quickly going through this book. Airbrushes, um, 
It's got a few that I know of. Bad Journey, Aerograph, which is a company based out in the UK. Um, uh, an Airbus called the Canopies. I've never heard of that one. And the Olympus HP. New airbrushes to me. This book is quite old. And, uh, but it, you know, it does cover a lot of stuff. So again, talking about airbrushes, different types. Um, talking to you about air cylinders, air cans, you know, everything that maintenance, all, all the good stuff. Very simple. Um, tell you what paints to use. This here, in this book, is called a fault finding chart. And it tells you what things or effects airbrushing if you have a problem and it tells you what to check in a step-by-step -step flow down of what could be wrong with your airbrush it is really good I think and I use this book as a quick guide to find out what's wrong with my airbrush again goes through materials um, some of his work there. Michael English is a really good airbrusher, man. Like he's he's done some really cool stuff. Um, I think he's done some stuff on on film as well. <coughs> you know, uh, so buy buy a book on airbrushing. Look at what other people have done. I mean, this is more for illustrators, but. I think if you learn about illustration and use the techniques from, from uh, being an illustrator, you can use those skills um, onto your model kits. Learn about um, color, color science. I have a book on specifically just on color, color, um, how color works, how to how to combine colors, contrast, harmony, and all the rest of it. That is part of modeling. Um, believe it or not. To show you guys quickly um i have again my dad my dad was an artist a very good artist and he gave me a lot of his books um, before he passed away sadly but this is a book on just on color and in here and he's put in there i'm gonna chalk up in a minute because he wrote a message to me put to darren with best wishes dad this is one book that my dad wanted me to have before he passed away. All right, Ali. And it's just a book on color. It's just got loads of like swatches and stuff like that. My dad was a, a very good watercolor painter. So with watercolors, you know, there's a lot of gradiency and, and mixing and, and layering of paint in there. Um, you know, so having something like that, oh, this comes with a swatch as well. So you can, you know, look at color and look at how color works with other colors. But yeah, that's just a book on color. So very, very good guide. Uh, look after that book. Well, I'll be passing that down to my daughter one day. So anyway, guys, thanks for watching. Um, I'm going to be cutting off the f um, video on my um, GoPro. Um, hope, hope that this video has helped you guys out there in YouTube land or you modelers out there. Um, you know, and if you're a new modeler that's watching that wants to get into airbrushing alley, <laughs> um, you know, don't be intimidated by these airbrushes or modelling groups. Um, buy a, um, a decent single action airbrush you know a, a good compressor practice first then apply that to your models you'll find that once you start airbrushing um, you will enjoy this hobby airbrushing is a hobby right you will see the difference on how it looks on a model kit and if you're doing illustration work it, man, it excites me so much using airbrushing, man. It's, it's, it's such a cool hobby to get into.
So I'm going to wrap it up on this feed. Um, I'm keeping the feed open on my YouTube channel. Um, and thank you for watching. TMD out.